Hi, my name is Marco Nuremberg, and I'm a researcher at the CVR working on HIV. What I find fascinating is how a tiny virus with so little genetic information can take over not only a cell, but a whole organism, such as a human being. How can it do this with so few genes and proteins? It turns out it can't, or at least not on its own. It needs to hijack a lot of the machinery from the host that is infected. So in the case of HIV, the human cell. But which of the thousands of proteins of a human cell does HIV need? For this, we are looking at a new technology we developed, which allows us to figure out how the activity of some of these human proteins change in the cell. So for example, some proteins which HIV needs may get attracted to the HIV RNA. You may ask, what is RNA? RNA is very similar to DNA, which we use in our body to store genetic information. But rather than being the archive of information, which DNA is, RNA is basically the blueprint which is sent out into the cell to make things. For HIV, it is the genetic information to make new viruses, and also the proteins of the virus. So if a virus needs help to make its own proteins, it will try to hijack human proteins to bind to its RNA to do the job. So if you find that much more of a protein is suddenly bound to the RNA after a cell is infected by HIV, we believe this is a good indication that such a protein is important for the virus. We have found that there are about 300 such proteins changing their behavior. About half are already linked to HIV, telling us how good this method is to find proteins important for HIV. But the other half are entirely new discoveries, where we are first to ever see them as being involved in the HIV infection. And as a scientist, this is a very exciting thing. What we hope is that at least some of these proteins can be used for host-based antiviral therapy.